Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Curious Clownfish, and I'm gonna be sipping on some French vanilla tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, Mars black, chrome orange, fallow green, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, a number eight round synthetic brush, and a number four round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same large canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint the background. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, blue, and white. And what I'm really going to do is just make myself a nice, deep, oceanic water color. So it's going to be kind of a nice, soft, dark blue. So I'm going to pre-mix those three colors, which I've already done, so you can see where I'm headed. So this is the color that I'm going for. What I, in essence, did was I took my ultramarine blue, and added just a little bit of black to it and just a teeny bit of white to it and then just spun it around. So what I'm doing is I'm in essence adding gray to my ultramarine blue. So it is softening it up a little bit, taking out that kind of unnatural look that the ultramarine blue has and it's providing me with a nice deep dark ocean color that I'm going to use as my background. So I've loaded my brush with that color, and I'm just gonna be painting the entire canvas with it. So you may find that you wanna use a bigger brush than I do. You can use a smaller brush. You can do it in any type of brush stroke that you want. This is really just the background. We're using it for, we'll call it like our primer coat of the painting. So we have a great starting place as we begin to build all of the elements in the painting. You can also, if you'd like to, paint the edges or the sides of the canvas. That'll make the entire canvas when you're done, the, the final work of art, it'll make it look nice and professional and like you really paid a lot of attention to the quality of the artwork being the entire finished product. So that's a, you know, just a, a, a good tip to, to do on all of your paintings if you are looking to present them in a, you know, in a manner to the public or if you're looking to maybe present them to a gallery or sell them online, making sure that they look nice and finished and have all of their, all of the, um, the edges done that really helps to to st to sell the product as a finished product and then once you've got this done if you want you can certainly go back and do a second layer but it's not entirely necessary at this point to have a perfect um, coat on it because we are going to be doing so many other details to it so what i like to do is i'll just take my brush and go back and forth this allows me to have a nice even um, 
coat of paint so it levels out any really thick spots and it fills in any thin spots. And then we're going to be using our, um, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put the large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the first layer for the anemone, which is the plant life that these clownfish are found in, I think, like the coral reef of the sea. So it's this really cool iridescent type of plant life that can come in a variety of different colors. So I'm gonna be choosing to do mine like a bluish green, yellowy kind of color, but you could certainly do yours whatever color you want. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer to get it dry that way. So I'm going to be using my medium paintbrush. The colors that I'm going to use are my um, custom blue that we made. I'll also be using brown, <clears throat> excuse me, and a little bit of white. What I'm really looking to do is really just try and uh, start the the motion and the movement of these little plant life, you can have them kind of coming out to the side or going up. They're just a bunch of almost like noodly looking <laughs> little pieces of plant. So they can kind of go in any direction that you want. So I'm gonna start with brown and a little bit of my background color on there. I'm gonna start at the top of my canvas and work my way down. And really what I'm doing is I'm gonna be doing some vertical type of lines. I just picked up my, my blue and I'm really I'm going to do v different directions. I'm looking to get kind of a stripey type of look going. Um, I'm picking up a little bit of brown, blue, and white right now so I can get some lighter versions of it in through here. As I work my way down my canvas, I will be kind of overlapping or crossing over some of these pieces. I just picked up some more brown. So throughout this process, I'm gonna be using a combination of my background blue, brown, and white. And I'm just giving myself a variety of different tones for these noodly type <laughs> shaped um, plant life and I'm having them go in different directions so that way it appears that they're just kind of coming up from the depths of the sea or ocean floor and of course you can make yours going in whatever direction that you want and again I'm just like right now I just picked up blue and white and you can certainly just kind of have fun with the different um, direction that you have them in they can look very organized or they can look very unorganized whatever um, you want them to look like is totally fine as I'm coming down I'm making the tops of some of them not go all the way to the top of my canvas and they're going to morph as we go through the painting process they will look a whole lot different as we start to add colors and stuff to them more vibrant colors but again this is right now is kind of just setting the the wheels in motion it's giving us the direction that we kind of want some of them to um, go in I am gonna have my fish in this area in through here, so I don't need to do a whole lot in through there, but if you wanted to, you certainly could. And again, I'm just kind of having fun with where they're coming. As I move down towards the bottom, I'm gonna use a little bit less of my white, and I'm gonna use more of my brown and my blue, so this way it almost gets a little bit darker Oops, I guess I had more white on my brush there. It gets a little bit darker as it comes towards the bottom. And I'm just ha having fun. I'm going in an upward motion, but I am definitely not um, caring if they're perfect. I'm just allowing them to kind of go in whatever direction they want to go in, <laughs> just in an upward kind of motion. And we will, and this may not be their final resting place as we go through the painting process and we're adding the other elements I may choose to add you know shorter ones or longer ones or you know different you know ones with different directions so again this is really just kind of starting the process giving me a place to begin that building process and then once we've got this done we are going to be using our um, our piece of chalk for the next step. So I'm just gonna kind of maybe give myself a couple of smaller ones in through here that just kind of pop at the bottom. And then I will put this brush away. I'll take out my piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our fish. I'm gonna be using my chalk. I do recommend, again, that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it's easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers and we're gonna connect the markers. Um, we're just going for some nice basic shapes in order to have a place where we can start to color in our wonderful sea creature. So I'm gonna start, I, I'm having my fish is gonna be a little bit to the right of the center. It's kind of swimming at the viewer. So I'm gonna have the main head body part in through here, and then we'll have a whole bunch of its fins and the rest of it on the sides of that. So I'm gonna start with, a, with an oval shape for the main head part. So if you find yourself like the middle of your canvas, left to right, top to bottom, some, mine is somewhere around here, I'm gonna go up from that, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches, and over to the right, maybe about an inch, inch and a half. And that's where I'm gonna put the top of this oval type of shape that I'm gonna do. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come straight down from that until I'm about maybe three or four inches from the bottom of my canvas, and I'm gonna go to the right just a little bit, maybe about a half of an inch. This way, this tells me that my top and my bottom, I have my fish kind of coming at us and it's gonna be a little bit at an angle, so that's why I moved this over to the right just a little bit. And I'm gonna connect these. The width of my oval shape is gonna be about, I would say like four inches wide, and the height is about six inches wide, something like that. And of course, you can shape yours whatever way you want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this top one to my bottom one with just a curved type of line, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here with a curved type of line. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something that's gonna give you this oval type of a shape will work. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a section off, a couple of little sections on the head. This will represent what's gonna end up being the white stripe around the face. So I'm gonna come up from um, the center of my bottom maybe about, I would say, three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna go to the left and make myself a dot, and then to the right and make myself a dot. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna curve these up and create a little sliver of an uh, area in through there. Curve this up like this, create a little sliver. And then I'm going to take these two and just make a big kind of another part of the oval. I'm just gonna kind of ride around the, the sides with maybe about a half of an inch um, width between my line and the edge, a quarter to half of an inch. And then when I get up to the top, I'm gonna to have a little bit more space between here and the top as opposed to the thickness here. So just something that's gonna give us, again, a, a nice little area. This'll end up being the big white stripe around the head of our of our fish. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a couple of um, fins. So I'm gonna have two fins down here and my fish is moving. So all of my fins are gonna be in different directions or they're gonna look a little skewed from one another. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right of the center and I'm gonna give myself a nice long narrow type of fin in through there. And then over here, this one's gonna be a little bit on the wider side and it's gonna look a little bit longer because I'm gonna be putting it um, more facing towards us and the fish is coming at us at a little bit different of an angle so this will give me that shape. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of a, a, this is gonna be the colored part of my fin and I'm gonna have a little black section along the edges so I'm gonna just kind of section out just a little tiny section there and a little tiny section on the left of here as well. So that'll give me my orange section and my black section. And then I'm gonna put a fin over here. So this is gonna be about halfway up or down this circle somewhere in through here is gonna be where it comes out like this and like this. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way out to about here. So this is maybe about three inches from here and it's a little bit higher than this. And then I'm just gonna connect it like this and then like this and I'll give myself again a, a little black or a little shape around the edge that's gonna help to um, utilize the two color sections that I want. I'm gonna put another big fin over on this side over here. So this is gonna be much wider and open as opposed to these ones that were just seen from the side. So I'm gonna come up from here a couple of inches, maybe about 
two inches up from here, give myself a little bit of a marker coming down like that. And then I'm gonna go up another maybe inch and a half to two inches somewhere in through here. So that'll be where it's coming out of the body. I'm only gonna have it coming out maybe about three inches. So somewhere about here is where the length of it's gonna go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna give myself kind of a, a, a nice carefree type of ripply kind of line that's gonna give me the edge of, or the shape of my um, fin, something like this. And then I'll do the same thing on the top. This one's gonna come a little bit more over, in an upward kind of motion like this and then down something like this and then again I'm going to give myself a little bit of a black or a section that's going to be our black edge around the edge so I'm just going to kind of give myself a little kind of barrier or another little section around that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself the big back tail fin and the side of the body. So actually yeah, let's do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, come out from the head, or this is the, the head in through here. We, we're gonna have the top of the um, body head in through here as well, but I'm gonna do the side of the body and the, um, and the tail in through here first. So there's gonna be a connecting line back here. What I'm gonna do is I'm coming down to about the height of here, gonna come to my edge and come out maybe about a half of an inch, right about here. That's gonna be um, a connecting line that's gonna go up and to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come um, up this little or down right around this corner and through here, this is where the edge of this tail is gonna come out and I'm gonna bring it out to about here. So this is maybe about two inches further than here and a little bit lower than this. So somewhere in through there. And then I'm gonna connect all of my dots. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go up in this vicinity. I'm gonna start to curve it back around in through here and then I'll bring it back down like this and then back into here. And I want a little bit of a uh, black section on this as well, but I think I wanna put it in, I don't want it to go too much farther. So you can either put the, the separating area um, on the inside of your line or the outside. These ones we did on the outside, this one I feel like I wanted to do on the inside, so I'll do it there. Then there's a white stripe on the back of this fish. So from this marker to down here, I'm gonna give a little bit of a curved line like this. And then I'm gonna go to the left of here about an inch, something like that. And I'm gonna kind of curve this up to about here. And then I'm gonna turn it out like that. So this is gonna be our white stripe on the back. I now have to finish this line in through here. I'm gonna bring this, this is gonna be a big top fin to this fish. So I'm gonna go straight up from here until I'm maybe about three inches from the top of my canvas. So somewhere about here. I'm gonna bring this down in a pretty narrow line and then I'm gonna uh, bring it out like this and meet the side of the body here and then meet this line in through here. So it sounds like there's an owl outside my house right now. <laughs> it's making me giggle, sorry. I have all kinds of weird noises. I live out in the woods. So right now there's like an owl or something outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this down from here pretty straight until I'm maybe about an inch away from the head in through here. And then I'm just gonna bring it out in like a curved line like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing in through here. Just bring it kind of straight down, maybe disconnect it a little bit, not much. I really want that to be nice and narrow. And then when I get to about here, that's when I'll start to disconnect it and bring it down. And I want it to look like a nice connected line in through here. So whatever you gotta do to just make it look nice and natural. And then we have one more fin. This will be like a back fin of sorts. So I'm gonna come down from here, maybe about an inch, somewhere in through there. And then this is gonna connect right in this little crevice in through here. I'm gonna bring it up, I would say, from here maybe about, I don't know, inch and a half to two inches, something like that. I will connect these with a big curved line like this and then give myself a little additional section for the black area around the exterior. And then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step, so you can make any little adjustments that you want, put away your chalk, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be doing the base coat for our fish. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, orange, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically just paint in a whole bunch of sections orange, a whole bunch of them black, and then where I want my white areas, I'm gonna be painting those with a little bit of a gray color. So I'm gonna start with just orange on my brush, and I'm gonna be painting in all of my orange sections. So as I do this, I know that my orange is very transparent, translucent, whatever you'd like to call it. So it will be taking on the colors behind it. I'm totally okay with that because I am going to use that to my advantage and use it as a building process for the, um, for the tonal values of this orange. So I'm gonna just start with this basic um, shade as I am going through this, let it get nice and dark because of the background colors that I'm using, and then as I build my my fish with all of the details, I'll be able to utilize that um, these darker tones that are being created on this step for building lots of dimension in this uh, in this fish. When you get to areas where the orange section is next to an orange section, you can leave a little bit of your chalk mark or whatever you used for a, um, a drawing um, utensil. You can use a little bit of that or leave a little bit of that mark visible if needed in order to um, maintain the integrity of your sections if you need to. And then I'm just use, I'm not using any fancy brush stroke, especially on the head, because I know that this is gonna end up being one soft gradient of colors by the time I'm done with it. So this is just, um, I don't need to put it in any specific direction. I'm really, <laughs> I'm hearing that noise again. Maybe it's a noise in my head that's that's going on, or it almost sounds like there's a howling outside somewhere. I'll have to check it out on the next break. So I'm gonna also um, paint this section in through here with my orange color. And then again, as I'm coming down these sides, I'm just kind of going right over my chalk mark and getting this to, um, to color in all the way. And as I, I'm trying just not to get confused with the sections. So as I'm going through this, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's gonna be my white section. This is my orange section in through here. So I'm just mindful that I don't get confused because there are a lot of sections on this right now. Um, as I get into these uh, fins in through here, I am going to start using a directional brush stroke with my orange because again, I know that the, the values in the orange will make a difference as I go through the painting process. And depending on how thick or thin that paint is in a specific area, you can already see, you can see the um, brightness and the darkness. So that will, um, that will help with that process. Along the edges of these fins, you can also ripple it a little bit. That will make it look a little bit more natural as well. So you can certainly have fun with that. But right now using a directional brush stroke in order to um, get this on in these fins. And it, it, I'm almost thinking maybe one of my, one of the, uh, there's maybe a deer or something outside. I can hear it faintly in the background, but again, I'm trying to not let it distract me, but the noise might, um, might get to me in a minute here. We'll see if, we'll see if we can take care of that in a second. And again, I'm just using, um, the orange paint in order to color in my sections that I need to color in. So uh, using this directional brush stroke to get it in these areas and leaving this little kind of scalloped edge uh, for these fins. Now that I've got the orange sections done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna create a tan or a light gray color for my white sections. So I'm washing and drying my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of white and a touch of brown and a touch of black. Just give myself a nice light gray color with a, little nat with a little bit of naturalness in it where that's where the brown comes into play. This is gonna be the base coat that I use for my white sections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color in these white sections with this gray color. And because I'm using a gray color, as the base in these sections, 
what will happen is when I go to add my highlights and shadows that I'll have an easier time creating that dimension because of the gray base that I'm putting on in through here. And the gray will help to really cover any of that background color. So this um, helps me to give a nice kind of primer coat and a nice coat that will be able to add the dimension on top of it. And as I go down into these little more narrow areas down the bottom, I'm just letting off on my pressure. If you needed to use a smaller brush, you could certainly do that, but I'm just kind of letting off on my pressure to give me my more slender lines. And then this section in through here is also uh, of the gonna be of uh, the white color. And if you overlap your areas like I just did or they morph into something that you didn't expect them to, you can always make little corrections once the paint has dried or, you know, we've got lots of steps to go. So if it doesn't, if you didn't call it, stay within your lines, <laughs> you can certainly make any kind of um, tweaking in a future step. And then I just need to do my little black sections. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush once again. And then my black sections are just these little edges of the fins. So washing and dry my brush using a little bit of black on there. And on these um, black sections, you can certainly ripple them a little bit. Um, maybe you don't need to on these smaller ones, but when you get to these big ones, you can definitely ripple them because that's what's going to make um, the, the gives a little bit of character on these fins. They can have, they have all different size. <laughs> some of them, some of these fish that I was seeing, they had super ripply, they almost look like fabric as the, at the ends of the fins. We're going to do, um, some fun white decorative, um, like little translucent, um, details at the end, but right now just kind of rippling this edge in through here. Maybe this one's got a little bit down in through here too. Again, just have fun with it. This is going to be your fish and you can make it as exciting or as you know clean and simple as you want. It's totally up to you. I'm just pushing my brush a little bit harder so I can get a little bit wider of a section on this one. Um, but again, you can make yours thin or thick, whatever whatever is appealing to your eye. And then maybe as I come around this edge, I make it a little bit more narrow, something like that. And then I just have these little edges over here. So I've got, let's see if I can keep my hand out of the way here. <laughs> maybe we'll go up and through here. I wanna get that little ripple ed edge, but I don't want my hand to get in the way. So maybe, maybe something like this, just kind of ripple the tip of that brush like this and then I'll bring this down in through here and then I've got this last one in through here and then once you've got this done we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer to the anemone. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are thalo green, yellow, brown, white, and my ocean or water blue that I created. So what I'm in essence doing on this step is I'm really going to identify each individual um, little, I don't know if it's called the stem or <laughs> each individual piece of the plant or the coral or whatever this is technically called. Um, and I've already started with all of these diagonal and curved type of lines, but what I wanna do now is put another color into them and also maybe round out the edges or put a more identifiable end to them. I do wanna add different color variations, so I have more kind of a, that iridescent type of look to it. The iridescence is gonna come from me using my base color of blue, cause that's gonna make them look a little bit translucent and like light can kind of pass through them because we're using that background color. Similar to how you do glass, how you really wanna use a lot of the color that's behind the glass within it in order for it to look um, see-through. So I'll be using some of that, plus I'll be using some brown, white as those three colors already exist, and then I'm gonna add some greenish and yellowish tones to it. So I've pre-mixed a couple of other colors that I'm gonna be using. So I have this color in through here. How I got to that was I used a little bit of my fallow green plus some of my background blue. 
So this is going to give me a real um, aqua teal type of color blue that's going to complement my scenery and it's going to make it look maybe a little bit more tropical-y. And then what I did, I'm going to wash and dry my brush to make this other color here. So this color in through here, I used a little bit of my phthalo green, a touch of brown, yellow, and white. And what this is doing is it's giving me a little bit of an earthy type of a green tone that will, um, as I put it on top of the other colors that already exist, will just make it look like there's a little bit more light showing throughout them. And then I can use any combination of these in the process in order to get them to blend and stuff. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can start with that, uh, we'll call it teal. I guess that's, that's a good color, a good way to call it. So this one I'm going to refer to as teal and this one will be blue. So I'm going to start with a little bit of this on my brush. And what I'm in essence going to do, like I said, was kind of identify where I want some of these tips to go. So maybe I have a tip in through here. And then when I figure out where I want it to go, what I'll do is I'm kind of rounding out the edge and then just lightly pulling that color back into the previous um, whatever that the the color is on that particular stem. So you can also add new ones. So if I want one in through here or the end of one, I just kind of make that roundness and then pull it down. Up at the top, you don't really need to put ends because they would kind of be off the viewing range. So you can certainly just incorporate a little bit of that color if you wanted to identify, you know, a couple of ones with this color in it. You can certainly just utilize um, this color on top of them. And I didn't use any additional uh, white in this mixture of this um, color. So it is pretty um, transparent where it's going to see the colors behind it. So I'm not too fearful that I'm going to um, color or cover up all of the other colors. It really will take on some of that color behind it. And if you wanted to take on more of the color behind it, you could add a little bit of water or liquid medium to the equation to allow it to have that, um, that more transparent appearance to it. So I'm just kind of adding some, some fun ends to these um, to these things and what I'm also doing again I'm pulling it down again I'm starting at the top of my canvas and I'll be working my way down so that way I can kind of build the, the tips of these in front of um, the ones that are behind it and I'm going to try and put them at at different angles so they look a little bit more natural like that they're just kind of leaning and moving with the motion of the ocean but you could certainly organize yours whatever way that you want once I've got enough of these, um, this, this color that I'm looking to do in through here and kind of identifying all of my little tips, you can of course do more or less than I'm doing. I'm doing some that are kind of coming out the back or from behind my um, fish, but you can make them go in which, whichever way that you want. Again, I'm adding some where they didn't necessarily have um, the heads to them or the tops to them on my first go around. So uh, this is just one of those steps where I'm just kind of exploring where I want them to go and giving the, the edges of them. A lot of them already have the edges, um, but there's going to be areas like in through here where I feel like I want a couple of additional ones. So I'm just kind of adding them on the fly as I, as I go through this process. And then in a second, I'm going to start adding um, some of that additional color that we made plus my black or my blue and my, um, and my brown also. As I get down towards the bottom of my canvas, I know that I want this to be a little bit darker down in through here. So when I go to add the, um, the colored part or the brighter part, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to add as much highlights down in through here. I want this to almost look like it's in the shadows, in the depths of the ocean. So I'm not going to over brighten it. I, I'll, I'll allow it to have some little areas of pockets of, of brightness, especially on the tips of some of these, but I'm not going to overdo this bottom section. So now that I've got all of these kind of really in place, I feel 
where where I want them to be represented. And I might add some other ones as I go through the, the process as well. But now I'm gonna start adding just a little bit of the other colors chaotically. So I'm picking up that light green plus my background blue, and I'm just gonna kind of sporadically put a little bit here and a little bit there. Again, I'm, I'm using this carefree type of style to give myself just a lot of depth and dimension in these colors. I, I am playing with where they are all located right now. I've got that light green on my brush and I'm just really kind of giving a lot of um, dimension with the layers that I'm putting on. So I started with my darker colors. You can even add more where you you may have not had one previously, but I'm picking up these colors in a carefree manner, just picking up, up you know, the light green when I want, the blue when I want, to just add this extra bit of, of lightness to them. I'm gonna add a, a nice bright highlight to them at the end, but right now, again, I'm just kind of trying to get them to be multicolored, which is allowing them to look nice and dimensional. Gonna put these little heads on them and then just kind of, I spin my brush and then just kind of pull it back again down the, the stem of that piece. And then once I've got this done, I, I'd let it dry and then see if there's any additional oomph that I want to put in. Maybe I want a couple of little heads in through here so I can just kind of wiggle my brush in a little bit of a circular type of motion to give the implication that that's the head of that particular um, uh, piece. And then once I've got this done, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So I'm gonna just kind of go through this. Again, I'll probably let it dry for a minute, see if I wanna add anything more to it before I um, go on to the next step. Let, just letting it dry will help see how those um, colors are gonna settle, and if you wanna add anything more, you certainly can. And then again, we will be using our small brush. And of course, if you have little spots that need to be attended to, you can certainly do that. We'll use our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the third layer to our, our, our anemone, anemone, uh-oh, <laughs> anemone, anemone, there we go. <laughs> so this is in essence gonna be finishing them as we go through. I'm just really putting a real bright highlight on the tips of them so they look like the tips are just kind of popping right out to the viewer. So what I can do is I'm gonna be using all of my colors, my light green, my teal color, and white. You could even use like brown and white to make a little bit of almost like a tan type of color. You can really just get creative with the highlight part that you want to put on it. It's going to be just a lighter version of whatever you've done. And if you want it to look like there's more light in there, you can put a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white. So enjoy the process, just make it a little bit lighter. So I'm picking up my light green, plus a touch of white on my brush. And I've got all of my tips already identified. And to make this look the most natural, if I don't do everything exactly the same, it'll make it look more natural. So if I, have a little bit of that um, lightness on my brush and I find my little tips and centers and just kind of let myself run out of paint, what's gonna happen is it'll end up being brighter on one of them and then as I work my way towards the other ones, they might not end up being as bright. And I'm looking for that the tip of these um, of these structures and that's what's going to make it look like it's kind of popping right out to the viewer so something like this and again right now i'm just using my light yellow or uh, my light green plus a little bit of white on my brush and just kind of finding those centers popping it on there in a little bit of a circular type of motion and then just pulling. I don't know if I mentioned, I'm using my small brush. <laughs> I might've mentioned that. I knew what well, I was going to use it when I left the last step, but I don't know if I mentioned it when I uh, started this step. So I am using my small brush and again, just finding those centers and then just pulling this um, 
kind of blending it out a little bit and then pulling that highlight down the stem if I feel that it warrants it, if I want it to pop out a little bit more. And then you could even just pick up a little bit more white if you wanted to and pop an even brighter kind of center right into that little circular um, top to that, to that um, piece. So this is gonna be really how um, how vibrant you want them to be. Right now, I just kind of keep picking up my light yellow, especially down, or my, my light green down at these bottom ones. I'm not putting a lot more white into them because I, again, I want them to feel like these bottom ones are a little bit more towards the um, ocean floor. But as I get towards the top ones or the ones that are closer to um, my focal point, I might make those ones a little bit brighter. And again, I'm just kind of finding the center or the top part of my um, of my um, stem. I just put some of my blue, my uh, ocean blue plus white on my brush just to change up the value a little bit or the tone a little bit. So as you go through these other ones, you, you know, you again, make them a little bit different than the ones in another in a, an opposing area that way it'll make it look a little bit more natural like over here on the left side maybe the light has shifted a little bit and it's not as vibrant as it is over on that right side so just to changing those little bits of tonal um, value if one side is a little bit cooler or warmer than the other that will make it look a little bit more natural and I'm trying to you know use a little bit of of brightness or a lighter shade so this gives it that bit of a highlight on the on the tips and then if you want them even brighter you just kind of pop in a little bit of extra white onto them and you might find that as you go through this process that you want yours to be really bright and you want maybe you want to put some pink in there or some you know more vibrant yellow it's going to be whatever is speaking to you you might find that you you know have these little spots where you want to add a, another tip to it because you feel like there should be another tip to it so enjoy the process right now i'm just kind of flipping back and forth between my light green my teal my ocean blue and white to give me these lighter versions on these tips and then what i do is just pull it down into or uh, uh, along the side of the um, of the stem itself. And again, this the concentrated highlighted part is going to be the tip of it, as if it's kind of popping right out at the viewer. So if you get it done, and then you feel that that um, it that it needs a, an extra little punch, you just come back in with a little bit lighter of a version right on that tip. Or if you feel it needs a little bit more blending, come back on top with your you know your like green or your teal or whatever color is speaking to you with that light base underneath that could make an even an additional color happen so just enjoy the process make it as vibrant as you want or as subtle as you want if i want these ones to be really bright i can just pop a little bit brighter white on them maybe in through here and then just kind of blend it out have fun with it you can make it clean or you can make it loose wherever your painting style takes you as long as you kind of give it the the um, information it will still appear to be have those realistic qualities to it even if you have a looser painting style like I tend to especially when I'm doing these carefree things with lots of of a similar element it's okay to be carefree and if you want to have dimension to it, you can still do that with a carefree painting style. You don't need to have everything really tight and, and photorealistic, allowing for um, these elemental changes like this or these, you know, highlight changes. Some are more bright, some maybe have a little bit more brown or yellow in them. I just put a little bit of brown, yellow, and white on my brush just to show you how you can kind of change the volume of this color. You can make it a little bit 
warmer. You can, you know, change the tone of it by just adding, you know, brown, yellow, white to give it this, this additional depth to it. So enjoy the process, explore the different tones that you can uh, incorporate and let it sit, let it dry for a minute. And then if you want to do anything additional to it, like I might end up doing, feel free to do so. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So have fun finishing your ocean plant <laughs> and wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some fish eyes. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, orange, and maybe a little uh, yellow and maybe a little bit of brown as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to have my eyes are gonna be a little bit below this area in through here and over to the sides. I've got my eyes or my head is a little bit tipped and not super straight forward. So they're gonna be um, at a little bit different angle so we can get some good glare and shine on them. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna start with a couple of oval type of shapes. So if this is the center of my oval, I'm gonna come down, I would say about an inch and then over about an inch somewhere in through this vicinity. And yours don't have to be exactly as mine. This is, you know, it's a, it's a organic kind of animal that can have, you know, a little bit different variations from one to another. So don't feel the pressure to make yours look exactly as mine. I'm doing a little bit of an oval, so it's a little bit longer than it is wide. And then on the left-hand side, I'm going to come all the way over to the left, and I'm going to um, bring it outside. Let me just make sure that I've got it kind of at the same height. I'm going to bring it outside of my... Um, face just a little bit, something like this, not a lot. I'm gonna be putting some other details on it in a minute, but just something like this will, will get me started. And then once I've got that on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I can start packing on the other details while this little bit of black is drying. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put um, some details around the eye. So really what I'm looking to do is kind of give uh, like an eye socket of sorts and also where the, um, above the eyes, a little bit more fish skin of sorts. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of orange paint on my brush to start and I'm gonna bring this out a little bit into that white area. So it's going to give just a little bit of a bump in through there. I'm going to do the same thing on this left hand side, but because this left eye is already out into the um, skin a little bit, I'm just going to bring this uh, orange color down a little bit on the top of that. So maybe something like that is pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and yellow on my brush without washing it. So right now I have orange, yellow, and white on my brush, and I'm going to start giving myself this um, lighter kind of highlight around the eyes. So what this is going to do is kind of give me um, almost like the the eye socket type of area where you're gonna feel that this eye is kind of popping out a little bit with the skin around it. So this is orange, yellow, and white. And I'm using these real sketchily type of brush strokes in order to get multiple colors in here. I don't necessarily need or want it to be a solid color. I'm just really looking to have some type of um, color around that eye to indicate the, um, the, the thickness of that skin around it. So I'm just kind of utilizing these three colors to, to get that into place. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown paint to give myself on my dirty brush to give myself a little bit. Actually, I think I need a little bit of black. The brown's not dark enough. So I picked up a tiny bit of, of black paint on my dirty brush. I'm giving myself a couple of little creases underneath. Um, and a little around that light area that I just did. So a little bit 
of creases is again going to help to give me the natural appearance of it. So it's in essence kind of the shadow around it. So something like that works out for me. Now I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to finish the inside part of the eyes. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of uh, black and white. So this is in essence going to make for kind of a gray type of look. So I have black and white on my brush at the same time. I'm going to put a little bit of a um, almost like a glaze on the eye, something like this in through here, just a little bit of a curve, maybe a touch over on this back side as well. I'll do the same thing over on this left side. The left side I'm gonna um, make a little bit brighter in a minute, but right now just kind of putting a similar kind of glaze on the outside, so it's a, kind of just like a, gr a, a shade of gray that I'm using. I'm gonna put a teeny bit more on this right side as well. That's, I need a little bit more black um, so I can have kind of equal on both sides. Then I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush, give myself a little bit of a sparkle over in through here and do the same thing over on this left hand side. So a little bit of sparkle over on this left side. I feel like I wanna pull this left side down a little bit more like it's going to be a little bit shinier than the right side so I just pulled that down a little bit more. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow paint right now as well. Put a little bit of yellow in here just give myself some nice shine to it and then I would just kind of keep fiddling so if I felt that I wanted a little bit more brightness over here I just put yellow and white I would just kind of keep amping up the tones of those um, shades around the eyes. I'm picking up orange now just to again make sure that I've got the um, the shape that I want so just keeping that oval type of shape and let it dry if you have to fiddle with it as much as you want and then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your cute uh, fish eyes done <laughs> you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the face. So this is gonna be this interior area in through here. I'm using my small brush. The colors I'm gonna be mostly using are orange, yellow, and white, but I might need a little bit of brown um, at some point, especially down here in the shadow. So what I'm looking to do is really put a big highlight in this nose, mouth area, and on the top, of the face in through here. So where I'm going to start is I'm going to start with yellow and white on my brush and I'm going to put a very light area in through here that I will inev inevitably darken up a bit but I'm using this light base underneath the um, the vibrant colors that I'm going to be putting on in order to make them pop better and have the the colors that I'm going to be using because I'm going to be using orange and yellow as the color of the fish. So with this white underneath, that's going to make those colors look more true. So again, I used yellow and white on my brush and I'm letting it fade out and up to the top of the head in through here. And then I had it kind of fading out these sides with the remnants on my brush. I can kind of rub in these other lighter areas. So there, if there's like a little jowl that you want to have evident, you can kind of just rub in that a little bit of a lighter tone underneath where the um, where you're gonna want that color to be a bit more vibrant. I want it to be the most vibrant where I'm gonna have the mouth somewhere in through here or the top part of the mouth somewhere in through here. So I'm just making sure that I have it nice and light in through there. I'm not using a ton of paint on my brush because I want it to dry kind of in a quicker fashion. So just letting this kind of stay on there. While that's kind of settling, I'm gonna go ahead and put my shadow down at the bottom. So I'm gonna just wash and dry my brush, make sure I don't have too much white left on my brush. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put orange plus a touch of brown 
on my brush to get this um, shadowy area down underneath here. We'll be also putting shadow down here as well when we finish the body, but right now I'm just kind of working on the face, some orange and brown in through there. And then as I work my way up the face, and I'm not concerned about bumping into my white area because we've got another layer to go on that. This is just, I wanna make sure that it looks nice and natural and curved. Now I'm gonna pick up some orange paint and I'm gonna start working my way up that face with my orange paint. So I'm using kind of uh, this curved type of brush stroke in order to capture the curve of the um, fish's face. You could certainly use more of a rubbing technique or whatever you feel is necessary, but this just keeps my brain straight as to what um, shape that particular um, object is in. I'm gonna bring this all the way up to the sides, make sure that whatever um, area I have to cover, that I make sure that I cover it all the way. So just bringing my orange up in through here. And again, not terribly concerned that I'm bumping in, which I'm bumping in a lot, but that's okay. I'm gonna go up in through here. I think I wanna bring this up just a little bit more, round out the top of this head, something like that. And then I'm gonna start working in my, um, my orange into this lighter region that we had created and you'll see as I start to overlap it, it'll be lighter in the areas where that undercoat is. As I get into this mouth area or right along these eyes, I'm gonna pick up orange and yellow on my brush at the same time. So this center area becomes much um, more vibrant with the, with the yellow tones. And then when I get towards the mouth, which is in through here, I'll be using more of just yellow on my brush. So right now I'm picking up just yellow on my dirty brush and I'm gonna get this center area to be a bit more in the yellow re region as opposed to the orange region. And then I just kind of rub it out. And again, because I had that light um, faded or gradient underneath it, that's allowing me to get this beautiful or this um, wonderful dimension in the, the face as it's popping out to you. So you can keep building the, like I just picked up some yellow, I can keep building the yellow on top of the orange because the yellow is transparent and you'll be able to see that orange underneath. So you just keep building it like that. Where I want my mouth to go, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up a tiny bit of orange. You could use orange or brown or a combination thereof. And I'm gonna have mine somewhere in this vicinity. I'm just gonna give them a little kind of a pouty type of look. So little mouth in through there and then just kind of bringing down the little sides of it. These fish are adorable with their little pouty faces. So you can have the mouth open too if you wanted to put a little bit of a open mouth in there, that's totally fine. So I'm just kind of bringing this down and making sure that it, it blends in nicely. I'm just putting a little darker line. It doesn't, you could use brown, you could use anything you want. I'm gonna make sure that this uh, upper lip part is nice and bright. So I'm adding a bit more yellow to my brush right now and maybe a little bit of white too, just so this really pops out and reads as sticking out further than the rest. And this is one of those you know, steps that you might find that you just let it dry for a few minutes and see because the and see if it dries in the value that you want because it might dry a little bit darker than you had anticipated simply because you have those colors of the darker tones underneath it. I just added a little bit of poof underneath the eyes too. Um, and then you just keep tweaking it. If you want it to be, you know, more orange underneath the mouth, I just picked up more orange and you just kind of keep adding those layers until you've got it into the vicinity that you want. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the body, which is gonna be these two white sections and the orange around the head. And this part here, <laughs> I think that'll be the I'm sure it's a fin, but I wanna do the, all their fins in a separate step. So we're just gonna call this finish the body plus this thing right here. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using white, uh, probably some brown, maybe a little bit of black, and that should be it. 
So what I'm in essence really going to do is I'm going to create some light areas on my white section, so top, at the top of them, and then just fade them down into a little bit of a shadow down here. And then in this orange section, I'm going to probably just be doing another layer of orange and make it a little bit brighter here and maybe a little darker here. And then this is going to be a little bit darker down at the bottom. So I'm going to start with my um, orange section so that way when I go to the white sections if I need to oh, if I need to make any little corrections I can. So I'm going to start down here with some orange and brown on my brush. I really am just looking to get this to be nice and finished looking down in through here. Have a nice shadow as it's going down towards the um, bottom of the ocean. I think actually I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black so I can get a little bit of dimension in where the body is going to meet this fin in through here so maybe something like this just give myself a little bit of a, sh a darker shadow the brown wasn't dark enough for me so I picked up a little bit of the black plus orange on my brush and then just making sure it connects well with this um, with underneath the head in through here so whatever I got to do if I need to use a little bit more brown like I just picked up a little bit more brown or black whatever you know whatever color works for you as long as you can kind of still see that it's a little bit orange underneath there that'll give you a nice um, shadowy tone as it as it goes under the belly of the of the fish and then as I'm going up this top side in through here, I probably just, I'm, I'm just using the remnants on my brush as I'm going into this orange section in through here and then here as well. Just making sure that I have a nice good coverage um, as I make my way up to the top. Now I'm just picking up some orange. Again, I don't need to do anything really fancy to this section in through here because it doesn't require me to. I'm just trying to stay inside my lines, which isn't happening very well, and just making sure I have a good coverage. I might add a little bit of highlight up at the top with a touch of maybe yellow or white. Beautiful thing about orange is you can use other colors as your highlight colors. So if I want, you know, a little bit of this right side to have a highlight on it, I could use a touch of my yellow orange and white on my brush just to give myself a little bit of a lighter area. I don't necessarily want it to be too light so I just picked up some more orange and got it to to blend in. So you can use other colors to add bits of highlights here and there. Maybe I got a little a little highlight up on this piece in through here just to make sure it looks finished. You know you don't want it to look like you haven't attended to um, you know the whole area even if you feel it should just be you know a soft and muted um, solid color that's totally fine but if you can add a little bit of dimension into it that'll make it look a little bit more natural and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna do the uh, white areas so wash and dry my brush and here I'm just going to, in essence, clean up my, my bottom area, maybe use my gray with a little bit of, um, of black, I mean of brown. So I'm going to use that original gray that we had um, created with maybe a touch more brown on my brush and just get this bottom area to really be finished and maybe look a little bit more in the shadow. And if you needed or wanted to put a little bit of black on your brush, you certainly could. Whatever works for you to, to get that to look like it is meeting the neighboring colors and that it is a little bit um, darker than what we're going to be doing up at the top. So that works maybe a touch of black on my brush just to make this bottom area nice and nice and in the shadows and I don't have hardly any paint on my brush I just really want it to look nice and in the shadows. I'm going to use the remnants on my brush to uh, get a little co coverage on this area this little section in through here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of uh, rub this up make sure that it blends in with the neighboring color and now I'm just going to pick up some white paint to get a real bright highlight at the top and through here so I really want this top section to be the brightest so I'm just coloring it in with white paint and then what I'll do is I will get it to blend down into that gray so I've got just my white paint on my brush giving it a nice good coverage I'll go behind my eye in through here with whatever the remnants are on my brush 
make sure that I clean up those edges where they where they meet that other section so again this is just white paint on my brush making sure I've got some um, I'm slowing down so I can get those edges nice and crisp and clean but if you felt that you wanted um, you know to have it more stylized and looser you could certainly do that as I'm coming down here I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water on my brush so so my paint becomes a little bit more transparent and it will give me an easier way to blend this into the gray it'll just make my paint see the gray underneath it so that works I'm gonna go ahead and hit this side over here again just picked up white paint on my brush making sure I've got some nice clean edges or at least attempting to I do have a shaky hand so when I am attempting to get nice clean lines you'll notice or what I do is I rest my hand on my canvas. So in this instance here, I've got the palm of my hand rested on my canvas and that helps me to get cleaner lines. I will also a lot of time use a little bit of moisture on my brush so that um, paint will sink into the um, little pits of the canvas and that also helps me get cleaner lines. So there's lots of tricks and tips as far as um, you know getting these nice smooth lines around the edge and we all have our own little barriers that we have to work through and figure out how our hand is going to be able to do that so what works for me in the you know in getting these clean lines might not be what works for you so you know test out a couple of different methods test it with more moisture test it with a different brush maybe you like short our brushes with very little or very short bristles on it. Sometimes that'll help you get a nice clean straight line. Um, so you just kind of work and find what works best for you. I'm going to go ahead and move over to this section in through here putting my heavy white up towards the top just getting myself a nice clean line in through here and then I will just make sure that it it blends or it is going all the way to my edges and then I will just kind of get it to blend down into the more um, shadowy area down here and this is going to give me some nice dimension on the side of my fish and then once you've got this done make any little tweaks you feel are necessary and then we are going to use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our fins. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are orange, yellow, white, um, and if I need any other colors, I might use a little black or brown for if I need to do any additional shading, but those are the basic colors I'm going to be using. So I'm going to tackle these kind of the same way that I tackled the face, which was I put some light area with my yellow and white for the parts of the fins that I really want to be the lightest and to take on the most vibrant of the tones. And then I'll use a layering process for, um, for the other areas. So I'm gonna start with yellow, a little bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. I want this fin over here to look like it's kind of flipped backwards. So I want us to see the underside of the of the fin so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this um, this area in through here I would say probably bring it we've got the little shoulder area I know that that's totally the right terminology <laughs> and then I'm going to just kind of put this yellow this light yellow section in through here I'm going to add orange to it in a little bit but this is going to make this this color really pop out um, and be nice and vibrant and as if you know whatever our light source is from above is illuminating this part of the fin so something like that I'm going to use this same color combination with maybe a little bit extra yellow on my brush to make other areas pop out like I want this part of this fin to pop out so I'm going to take um, this color combination and just give myself these very vibrant sections of it and I'm pulling my brush in the direction that I feel the little ripples of the um, fins would go in so this is just giving me that that ample movement in the fins that will um, translate really well for for the movement of it when I add um, the 
more realistic colors that I'm going to be adding in a minute. So again, this is a, a lighter version of what the end result is going to be in order for that end result to have its optimal brightness. So I'm putting this lighter layer to act as um, kind of a boost for the brightness of those other layers. It just provides an easier way to build when you're working with a dark background. So again, I still just have that yellow and white on my brush and I'm bringing, bringing a little tip in through here, maybe just bringing it back just a little bit into that orange region. Let's see, where else do I want it? Maybe a little bit up and through here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more orange on my brush. I don't want this one to be as bright, but maybe, you know, starting it with a little bit more orange on my brush will give me um, some of that some of that movement I'm looking for. And again, just bringing it in the direction that I want those um, those fins to look like they're going. I'm just picking up more orange at this point with on my dirty brush and bringing it in almost like this striping type of fashion down towards that base of the um, of the fin where it meets the body. And now that I've got those light areas in there, maybe I'll put a little bit more orange right in through here. Now that I've got those light areas in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just build my, my full colors. So right now I'm just picking up orange and yellow on my brush. Um, actually, I'm gonna wash my brush. I think I might have some white on there and I don't really want white at this point. So I'm gonna pick up orange and yellow and I'm gonna get this inside area really nice and bright because it has that light background and I'm gonna give it kind of a stripey type of look. Again, this is feeding to the, um, the movement of that, of that um, fin. And now I'm gonna pick up some orange and I'm really just gonna give the, um, the darker orange parts another layer. So I don't need to do much uh, like on this particular fin down here because it's just down below. I'm just seeing a piece of it. I don't really need to do much other than make sure that it's fully painted. So I've got this one in through here, just giving it another layer. And if I needed to do anything where it met the body, I sure could. Like I could put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush if I felt that I wanted a little bit more shadow on the bottom side of that fin. So that worked out well. That gave me a nice little bit of dimension in through there. So, cause I had black on my brush, I'm washing and drying it. I'm gonna go into this one with just some orange paint on my brush right now. And again, I'm overlapping it onto those lighter areas that we just did. So because we have that light base under there, now I've got these multiple tones in my orange, which makes it look really nice and vibrant and has a lot of body to it and a lot of movement to it, making sure that I get rid of any of my uh, evidence of my blue under um, color in through there, or chalk marks if I have any chalk marks. And again, just picking up my orange and I'm kind of laying the orange on pretty heavy, allowing for it to um, have its thicker spots where you're gonna see that orange in a little bit truer of a color as opposed to if I used it really thin, it might um, still take on too much of what's underneath. So you just kind of play with that as much as you need to. And then same thing over on here. So again, just layering on my orange at this point, if I felt I wanted a little more yellow to um, counteract any of that, you could certainly pick up yellow as well. Just have fun with it, make it as vibrant as you want. And then what I'm gonna do is once I've got my, my the, um, orangey yellow part of my fins, maybe a little bit more yellow on this one, give this one a little bit more um, volume to it. I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put the, um, finish the black parts, which in essence are gonna have these little white, like, um, they look like little see-through pieces of cloth to me. They're like little hairy, uh, delicate, feathery little ends off of the um, fins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm using my small brush, I'm using white paint with a lot of water in it. And if you have dirty white paint like I do or dirty water like I do, it's okay if it's got a little bit of a 
tone of something else in there, it's still going to look nice and vibrant on your, on your canvas. And lots of water on my brush, and what I'm doing is I'm going to go for the edges like this, and then just kind of ripple it along a little bit past that, um, the, the black, and then just kind of allow it to look as if it's see-through. So I'm just giving these little edges and then maybe some little bits of stripes here and there. You can even pull it into the, um, the black area a little bit. If you want little brighter tips, I just put a little bit more white paint on my brush without adding more water. And that's going to allow me to get a little bit more vibrancy in it. So if you want like where it meets the um, fin to be more vibrant and visible, use less water and as on your brush and as you're going farther away from the um, fin itself that's when you can add more water to your brush and that'll make it look more transparent or translucent so that's how you would intensify that appearance i'm going to do the same thing over on this one so i just have it really watered down on my brush right now maybe a little bit more so we can actually see it you can always add more but it's it's um, advisable to start with less on your brush and just build your way so I'm gonna start maybe right at here because I feel like I have a, a good amount of paint on my brush and then just kind of pull it out in these little streaks and wiggles and that's going to give me that transparent look to it you can bring it down in through here you can like i said even overlap it into that black a little bit that's going to make the black look like it's got a little bit of a ripple to it picking up a little bit more white on my brush to give myself a little bit brighter of a highlight or an edge to this so just you know intensifying maybe a little piece of it will make it look a little bit more natural so oh, my orange is wet I just stuck my finger in it <laughs> so I've got it on my brush right now and then maybe I've got the start of it going in through here and as I get towards this back fin maybe they're a little bit longer so because the back fin is a longer piece of the of the fish so I've got it pretty you know thick in where it's touching the fin and then I'm just pulling it out in this carefree like little hairy I know that they're not hairs I don't know exactly what they are but they're airy type of fabric looking things to me they look just dainty and like the water is really taking them into this you know ex exotic moving type of space like they're dancing on the ends of the fins I'm reloading my brush to go ahead and do this next one. This next one I'm going to add it pretty bright along the edge in through here just so we can really see it on top of um, everything and make it look like it's a little bit closer to us. So I've got the paint a little bit thicker with less water on my brush. And as I come down into this area, again, making it a little bit brighter where it's touching the... Um, the actual fin itself and then just kind of pulling it out in these carefree type of strokes into into the water area making sure now I've got a good an amount of fluid on my brush so it maintains its transparency and I'm pulling mine out probably about a good inch or so um, especially on this one in through here you could certainly pull yours out farther or less some of these fish don't even have this little edge to it but a lot of them do so you can you know utilize your own uh, wishes when it comes to that I'm going to put just a teeny bit on this guy in through here just to kind of make sure that we feel like we've attended to everything and then you just kind of do little fiddles here and there if you feel like you've got other you know anything else that you want to uh, ampli amplify feel free to do so and then we're going to be using this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right i'm going to be using my small brush i'm going to sign this one in the bottom left with black paint i like to sign mine with my initials but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool fish. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.